الله تعالى آمين يا رب العالمين. So we are in this uh, chapter يعني of جنازة. In our last lesson we mentioned about the integrals يعني of the جنازة prayers and we have completed uh, speaking يعني about the integrals يعني of the جنازة prayers. Today إن شاء الله يعني we will continue يعني with bearing يعني of the disease. That's what any we are now in in this uh, chapter in of the book where the author any mentioned first loan is it too low or say huh? huh? okay so the author any mentioned first loan wa aqal dafni khufratun taktumu ra'ihatuhu wa تحرسه من السباع. طيب. so he mentioned he mentioned يعني the minimum obligation يعني we forgot يعني to bearing يعني of the disease. so what is يعني the minimum obligation? and before يعني we go into this يعني we just يعني do a bit of revision as usually we do. so when comes يعني to the janaza prayers, we have يعني these seven integrals. maybe what I will do. Uh, before we go on, let us revise what we have learned from the Janaza prayers. And this is important because uh, I think this is a, the most any important chapter because most of us are performing the Janaza prayers now and then. So it is important for us you know, to memorize, uh, especially the integrals. So if a person asks you what are the integrals of Janaza prayers, you are able you know, to answer. There are seven. Uh, all these things, you know, it is. It is important for us to memorize, uh, memorize. So and then we can also teach others. Any for those who does not understand. Number one is the intention, and we mentioned that janaza prayers is far. It is not sunnah. So there is an obligation to intend fardia. So he say usalli far dal janazati. So the word far then it has to be understood that it is an obligatory. Obligatory prayer. Usali fard al janazati ala had al mayit. Usali fard al janazati ala had al mayit. We can add kifayatan. Usali fard al janazati ala had al mayit. Kifayatan. Yeah, I need to specify that it is fard al kifayah. But it is understood even without kifayah. Janaza prayers and it is understood and it to be a communal obligation. Yeah, any fard al kifayah. Number two, they are the four takbir. The four takbir. So we have the first, second, third, and the fourth. Number three, recitation of Surah Al-Fatihah here in Muqaddimah Dhamiyah. The author did not specify which takbir that we recite Surah Al-Fatihah. Because in the Mada Al-Imam Shafi'i, it can be recited in any takbir. That is a prevailing judgment, although we have differences in the Imam Sayyid Ulama. But it is preferred any that we recite in the first takbir to go out any of differences any of uh, of some many scholars like Al-Imam Rafi, for example. Uh, and then I need the uh, fourth any yani, is to stand al qiyam. So it is not permissible for a person to sit down when performing janaza prayers when he is able any to stand because this far. Number 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 five is to make salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam specifically after the second takbir. After the second takbir, we make salawat any yani, upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the minimum salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Just like in uh, Tashahud Akhir also we mentioned, the minimum salawat is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Uh, but we can add and we can say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. No problem. Number number six, to make supplications any for the disease. Uh, this is the, the important thing any that we have to understand. When we are in the third takbir, we must make dua specifically for the disease. And this du'a has to be in Arabic. This du'a has to be in Arabic because we are in prayers. If you make du'a in other than Arabic, if you say it out, your prayer becomes invalidated. Now, so the minimum usually what we teach any to common people, Allahumma ghfir lahu. You need to make things easy. Allahumma ghfir lahu. Or Allahumma rhamhu. If the janazah yani is a woman, we say Allahumma ghfir laha. Allahumma rhamha. Usually we say Allahumma ghfir lahu wa rhamhu wa afihi wa afanhu. That is enough. Yani we do so in the third takbir. Otherwise our prayer will not be valid. Uh, otherwise our prayer yani will not be will not be valid. 
And then lastly is the salam. Assalamu alaikum. This is the minimum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And it's a sunnah. So we mentioned uh, about this. And also lastly, the author speaks any about as-siqt. As-siqt yani, is a miscarriage. Yani, when do we ascertain whether it is compulsory for us to perform the prayers for the uh, for the miscarriage and, uh, for the uh, child any of out of miscarriage any or not? Uh, so we have anything that is that is less any than four months. Uh, anything that is less than four months, and when it come out any there are no signs any of life, then there is no prayers. If, but if there is signs any of life, then it is compulsory upon us any to perform. The Janazah prayers, and then there is a difference between Imam, Imam Ibn Hajar and Sheikh Ramli pertaining to six months. Sheikh Ramli, and he mentioned anything that is above any six months, we can perform the prayers. But Sheikh Ibn Hajar mentioned not necessary. It depends if the child comes out in a state any of life, then only we perform any the Janazah prayers. So these are some many differences any amongst amongst any the fuqaha. But when it comes to a child that comes out dead. It is not wajib any for us any to perform the prayers as pertaining any to the bathing. It depends any if the body parts any are, are are seen, meaning are formed, then we have any to perform any the bathing. But if it is just any a, a, a clot in your blood or a clot any of uh, meat, then it is not any compulsory. Uh, it is not compulsory any to bathe. It is not compulsory. To perform the janazah prayers, so pertaining any to the six months, and it is only Imam Ra- Imam Ramli. Uh, if you can memorize this, Imam Ramli and is is the one who says that anything that is above any six months, we can bathe and pray. Yani and kafan. Yani we treat it as e as a normal any disease. So now any anyway, we go to the chapter any anyway, of bearing. So the author any anyway, mentioned akalu dafni hufratun tagtumu ra'ihatahu. Uh, what is the meaning any of akalu dafan? This is the minimum minimum burial. The minimum any burial is a hole that is dug. The depth any of the hole any is, is such that it can prevent the odor from being sensed. Can we understand this, inshallah? Type. For example, if I ask a question, uh, the a dead human being, tamam, a dead human being. If we were to bury a dead human being uh, to to bury it in the earth in the earth how deep should the hole be to such an extent that the smell cannot be sensed to the person who is on top can all of us any understand this this uh, this rationale now if you ask any the question if a human being, a dead any human being, were to be buried, tamam, were to be buried, how deep any should the hole be? To such an extent that the foul smell any of the dead body cannot be sensed any by the person any who is on top any of the grave. How deep any should the hole be? So here the author any when he speaks any about akalu dafan, the minimum barrel it must be in a way that. The smell of the dead body cannot be sensed by the person any who is on top. If that can be achieved, it is enough. Yani, if you bury, if you bury any dead body to such an extent that that when it decay, nobody any can can smell the foul smell any when he is any on top. That is a minimum obligation. Tamam? So there is no specific depth then pertaining to the to the burial. This is the minimum any obligation. But of course, any to play safe, usually we we will dig any deeper to play safe. So this is what the author mentioned. First thing he said, wa akalu dafdi hofratun taktumu ra'ihatuhu wa tuhrisuhu minas siba. Point number two, and he mentioned that the wild animals any cannot gain access any to the dead body. Yani if if the dead body any is uh, is buried any lowly, for example, just one meter. If it happens any to be in the Sahara Desert, for example, wild animals any can gain access. The hyenas, or wallahu uh, alam, any tigers or lions, you know, they can gain access any to the body, because any one meter any is not that deep. But if it is seven meters uh, or five meters any, for example, then wild animals any cannot gain access. Uh, it's going any to be very tough any for them to to have any access any to the body. So there are two pointers here. Number one is the smell. 
Number two is the excess any of the wild animals. So we ask any the question: wild animals, how deep can they dig? Yani if you are look, if we are speaking any about in the wild, how deep any kind of animal any dig? For example, a vulture. How how deep any kind of vulture dig? How deep any can the tigers any dig? How deep any can the lions dig? How deep uh, how deep any can the hyenas dig? So that there, there is a certain limitation any to the wild animal. So if these two conditions any are there. Then it is enough. And then any the author any mention what is the best, tamam? What is any the best in terms any of the depth? So he say wa akmaluhu, ah wa akmaluhu the the best and the most uh, in in perfection that is recommended qamatun wa basta. What is any the meaning of qamatun wa basta? Here he is speaking any about a man who is not any too tall, not too short. The height any of this person and basta. Yani when he do this, yani he raise up his hand like this. This is karma and basta. So if I were to stand up, my height any is one one point eight two. If I add any basta, uh, yani for example, and it becomes two meters. Ah, huh? two me maybe two two point one two point two. This is the normal any height any of a person. So it is about that kind any of depth. Wada wada lika arba atu adu in wanis. So the author any mention it is about four arms length, four and a half any arms length. Arms length one arms length any is about one hundred sixty five centimeters. One hundred and uh, now one hundred sixty five. Yeah, half one half one. Sorry sorry. Uh, one arms length. No 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 no. Not one hundred sixty five. It is about sixty five. If I'm not mistaken, uh, last time when we spoke about this, right? When we mentioned any about about uh, about kulatain, if not mistaken, zira wa rubo. Yeah. How much is it? Forty-six. Forty-six. One arm length. Forty-six. 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 Any cm. So forty-six. We times any four. And a half. That is what any we will get. Ah, this is what any doctor any meant any by by karma and basta. So it is about any that depth. Wajahumu nabshuhu qabla bila in illa li daruratin. Then the author any mentioned it is not permissible to to dig any the grave any again before it completely decompose. This is a thing that nowadays any people any do not pay attention any to this. If there is any a grave, any for example, it is not permissible for anyone to dig any the grave until when, until the body is completely decomposed. Yani completely decomposed meaning if you dig any the grave, there are no more traces any of the dead body. If there are no more traces any of the dead body, then only any you can dig any the grave if there is a need to. For example, any if you go to some places in India, agricultural land, usually this what they do. They do not have any much land any for graveyard, so they will dig. Uh, they will dig any the grave after after a few years, and then they will put in any a new body. This is any permissible any if there is a need to, if there is not 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 enough land, tamam. But the condition any is that qabla bila haram before the body any decompose it is not any permissible. If there are still uh, bones that are. Present, yani in the in, in the graveyards, it is not permissible any for us to remove them. This one, any doctor, any saying, "Wajahumun, wajahumun nabshuhu qabla bila in illa li daruratin." Except any if there is any a uh, darura, there is any an emergency that has any to be done, that there is not much land, and no, there is no more land any to for for people any to be buried. That is any a different a different any situation. If that is any the case. Then it is permissible any to, it is permissible any to remove. And number two, any if, for example, uh, the, a person any need to dig any the grave any of his parents any for example, something fell into the graveyard, and then after a few days, they decided any to dig any to get to gain access any to the thing. Uh, this is any also the thing. It is not any permissible any to dig to to dig any the grave. To take any something any from the grave, for example, because now the body any in a state any of decomposition, so it is not any permissible unless any if there is a dire need any to do so.
So this is what the author he mentioned. Uh, if any dog is a dog, so dog or any can uh, can 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 mean any uh, a few meanings. One any of the meanings any if uh, something any precious any fell into the grave a person any needs any to 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 get any that thing. Then only it is permissible any for him to dig any if there is any a real need. Otherwise any it is not permissible if the body any has been has been buried and the body any has been going through a process of decomposition. So by this any alhamdulillah any we have completed the chapter of janazah. So now any inshallah we are going any into the chapter any of zakah. And uh, the author began chapter any of zakah any as usual by speaking about the zakah of the animals, livestock. But before any we go into that zakah in, in Arabic language, it means any something that increase. So we say, for example, in Arabic, zakah azarong. The vegetation yani grows. Huh? What are the meanings any of zakah? Is increment and growth. Increment and growth. So there is this connection any between zakah and our money. When we pay any zakah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless any our wealth and will make it go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it go. Zakah any also any comes any from the word tazkiyah. Tazkiyah meaning purification. So zakah, by giving out zakah, it purifies our wealth. Sometimes any our wealth, any there is shubaha, there are certain things any of haram, our source any of income any, is mixed any with things any that are prohibited. By giving out zakah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cleanse any our wealth. Uh, this is one of the benefits any of one of the benefits any of zakah so this is uh, what you call it in the language in the arabic language whereas any in the sharia zakah yani it refers any to the obligatory any proportion of the wealth that is specified by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be given any to a specific people yani specific wealth to be given any to specific to specific any few people as a form any of charity. So the author yani mentioned La Tajibu Zakatu illa ala al Muslim. The author yani began any to speak any about who are those who are obligated to pay the zakah. So we say this is Shurutul Wujub. Uh, Shurutul Wujub. It is yani the conditions that makes any Zakah becomes yani compulsory. That means any zakah yani becomes becomes yani compulsory. Now, so he said number one, alal huri, yani a free man. So zakah is not compulsory upon slaves, whether it is a complete slave or contract slave. Uh, there is there is a type any of slave that is called the mukatab. Mukatab can accept zakat, but zakat is not compulsory upon him. Mukatab any is a mukatab is a contract slave. Yani the master uh, tells him that if you can bring me a certain amount of money, I will free you. This is a mukatab. So he can accept zakat, but he cannot. He is not obliged really, to give to give zakat. So it must be any of free man. Today, all of us any we are free man. Any basically. Point number one, al-Muslim, zakah is not compulsory upon the kafir. Uh, Non-Muslim, the Muslim uh, ruler cannot enforce zakah towards any non-Muslim. Uh, it must be a Muslim. Rayril Janin, when comes any to Janin, in the mazhab of Imam Shafi'i, it is not any compulsory. What is any meaning any of Janin? Janin any is the womb the baby that is inside any the womb meaning as long as he has not any come out any from his mother's womb zakah yani is not compulsory but unless any if he has given uh, been born if he is any given birth to and he, the baby inherit wealth from the family there is zakah uh, there is zakah. In the mazhab Imam Shafi'i, we do not take into consideration whether balir or non balir Even any a small child in that is rich, zakah is compulsory upon him. We do not any take into consideration whether this person is mukallaf or non mukallaf, whether balir or non balir But when it comes to janin, he is not yani. We we do not we are not sure whether this janin will be born or not be born because there is a possibility 
that it might not come out live it might not any come out any alive so there is no compulsion any upon the janin but when it becomes any compulsory when it is born then the author any mention any the types any of wealth where there is zakah so the obligation the, the conditions any on the obligation of zakah is a free man muslim and uh, what do you call it royal janin yani not any in the mother's womb other than that any zakah any becomes any compulsory so we see that puberty any is not part any of the condition uh, puberty any does not part any of the condition so the author any mentioned number one the type any of wealth that zakah any is compulsory is an naam an naam any is a livestock so an naam any that is mentioned here there are three types camels cows and sheep only these three types any there is zakah other than these three animals no zakah there is no zakah on horses there is no zakah on uh, chickens correct or not there is no zakah yani on ducks and, and everything else so zakah yani is only compulsory on these three animals so the author yani mentioned wa fi kulli khamsin min al ibli ila 20 shatun jadaa now yani he began and to speak any about camels zakah of the camels we have just any gone through this any in fatul muin so for those any been following any it should be easy and straight forward so the author yani yeah, mentioned every five camels every five camels shatun jadaa shatun jadaa yani every five camels one one goat or one sheep 10 camels two sheep 15 camels three sheep 20 camels four sheep this what any he meant fi kulli khamsin min al ibli ila 20 until 20 so for every five any how many shatun jadaa shatun jadaa naam jadaa yani meaning the front if any falls the front if so it depends if it is a sheep it must be one year if it is a goat it must be two years what is any the difference between sheep and goat ah we need to know this difference Huh? What is the difference between sheep and goat? The difference is, is like this. Sheep produces wool. Goat produces fur. So if the body any of this animal on top any is wool, it is a sheep. If it is fur, it is a goat. This is the difference between in Arabic and we call it da'nun and ma'iz. Huh? Don't know and mice. What is the difference? The difference any is in the hair. Wool any offer. If it is wool, it is a sheep. If it is hair, it is a goat. So normally in Malaysia, in Indonesia, we find mostly any. Wallahu alam. I see there are goats. Uh, goats. So when you when you look any at the at an animal with uh, if, if if there is any fur, خلاص. And we say this mice. But if it is any wool, it is don. What is the difference? The difference any is when we go we we pay the zakah. So if it is if it is a sheep, it must be at least any one year. Sanatun. This is what he said. Aw jazu da'nin. Lahu sanatun. It must be any one year. Aw saniyatu ma'zin. If it is ma'z, ma'zani is a good. It must be two years. Saniya. Aw saniyun lahu sanatan. So this is this is uh, what you call it whether it is saniya or saniyun yani meaning whether it is a male goat or female goat it must be two years clear inshallah right so every five camels any one goat or one sheep naam ila ishrin the author mentioned until 20 then he say wafi khamsin wa ishrina bintu makhab laha sana what happens any if the camels any reach 25 ah once any the camel any reach any 25 any we say that now it is compulsory for you to pay what a camel. Type what type any of camel any must I pay? If I have twenty five any camels, I have to pay bin to mahat laha sana. Bin to mahat it is it is a female camel who has reached one years of age coming to two years. This is the meaning. It has reached any one year of age coming to two years. 
Why any is it is it is it called a bintu makhad? Because now it is time any for the mother to give birth again. Because makhad any meaning giving birth, ah, uh, pregnancy. Have one pregnancy. Makhad in Arabic language, ah, uh, it means any pregnancy. Why any the the daughter of a pregnant, ah, uh, what you call it, ah, uh, camel. Because now the time the time any for the mother to be pregnant again. Ah, uh, the mother has given birth any to, to this any camel. So this is bin to makhad. Laha sana ton. Type. If a person says, but I don't have any bin to makhad. I have ibnu labun. Type. This is the only exception yani, in the chapter yani, of uh, zakah when it comes yani, to the camels that you can pay a male camel instead of a female. You can pay any a male camel instead of a female camel only in this exception. What is the exception when a person does not have bin to makhat? He said, "I do not have bin to makhat, but I have Ibn Labun." Can can Ibn Labun take any the place of bin to makhat? What is the difference between bin to makhat and Ibn Labun? Ibn Labun, a camel that has reached two years of age. Bin to makhat, a female camel that is one year one year of age. But Ibn Labun, it is a male camel, not a female camel. So this is the exceptional case. In this particular chapter, we are ulama and he mentioned this is the only exception that we can pay the male camel instead of the female camel. Where is the exception here? This is the exception. Yani, a person does not have bin to makhad. It is permissible any for him to pay ibn labun. So labun, two years of age. Labun any meaning what? Two years any of age. So now the mother that has given birth any to this camel now has produced milk. Because Labun any comes any from the word Laban. So Labun here meaning two years any of age. Camels that have reached two years of age is called Labun. So Ibn Labun, male camel. Bintu Labun, later inshallah we will we will look any at Bintu Labun. But here it is Ibn Labun. That means it is two years any of age. In Faqadaha, if he does not have Bintu Makhad. Clear inshallah. Yani he does not have Bintu Makhad. It is permissible any for him any to pay Ibn Labun. But if he has been to Makhad, can he pay Ibn Labun? No, cannot. This is only in the situation where a person does not have been to Makhad. So he can pay Ibn Labun. Taib. Wafisitin wa salasin. So now we have this Nisab. This is this the Nisab. Nisab, any of camel. First thing, any the five. Ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Then after 25, it jumps into how many? Sitin wa salasin, 36. So anything in between 25 and 36, we call it waqsun. Waqs, yani what is compulsory, yani is still bintu makhat. Still bintu makhat. Until yani it reaches 36. If a person has 36 camels, after one year, howl, then he have to pay bintu labun, laha sanatan. Now he, it is compulsory upon him to pay a camel that is known as bin to labun. What is the meaning of bin to labun? Yani it is a female camel that has reached two years of age. Type. If he said that I don't have bin to labun, can I pay ibn labun? Cannot. This situation, no. Khalas. We say the only the only situation you can pay ibn labun if you do not have bin to makhad. But now this is bin to labun. You cannot replace Ibn Labun and Bintu Labun. No way. You have any to pay Bintu Labun. Laha Sanatan. This is a camel that has reached two years coming to third year. This is the meaning. Huh? It has reached two years coming any to, to the third year. Then Wafi Sittin Wa Arba'in. Wafi Sittin Wa Arba'in. 46. So from 36 and it comes any 46. So anything between 36 and 46, what is any the, the obligation? Bin to Labun. Tamam. If he has any 40 camels, bin to Labun. 41 camels, bin to Labun. 43, bin to Labun. Until any he reach 46. Once any he reach any 46, Hiqqatun laha salasun. It is compulsory upon him to pay the Hiqqa. What is any the meaning of any Hiqqa? It is a female camel that has reached three years of age coming to the fourth year. Why is it named any hiqqa? Because al-an tastahiqqu rukub. Now we can, we can, uh, what do you call it? We can climb any on the camel. 
Huh? We can write any on the camel. This is the meaning of hiqqa. So camels, any that have reached any this age, now any it is the time any that you can write any the camel. Because if camel, bintu labun, any is too small. Bintu makhat, still small. But once any reach any hiqqa, meaning we can write any on the camel. So this hiqqa, any is a big camel. Huh? Uh, an adult. So that is why the price of hiqqa is much more than Bintu Makhad and Bintu Labun. Naam. So, wa fi sittin wa arba'ina hiqqatun laha salasun. So, it is three years coming to the fourth year. Wa fi ihda wa sittin, then sixty-one. When the camel and you reach any sixty-one, jaza'atun laha arba'un. Then any we have any to pay a camel that is known as jaza'a. Again, jaza'a meaning what? The front thief and he has fallen. Yani camels, after they reach four years of age, the front thief and he will fall. So they call this camel Jaza'a. Uh, four years coming to the fifth year. Wafi Sittin was Sabain. The next and in this office, how many? 76. Binta Labun. Binta Labun. Two Bintu Labun. 76. Two Bintu Labun. Wafi Ehda what is in Hekatan. One is rich and in 91, two hiqqa. So this is clear, inshallah. Wa fi mi'atin wa ihda wa ishrina. After you reach 121, salasu banati labun. Three bintu labun. How many? Three bintu labun. After you reach 121 camels. Wa fi mi'atin wa salasina. Then... 130 Hiqqatun wa binta labun One hiqqa and two bintu labun 130 Wa fi kulli arba'ina Then khalas Then he said Wa fi kulli arba'in bintu labun Wa fi kulli khamsin hiqqa So after 130 We can apply this formula Every 40 bintu labun Every 50 hiqqa So if a person And he have 200 camels So he got a choice Whether he wants any to pay Kulli arba'in or kulli khamsin? Yani if it takes any kulli arba'in, how many arba'in are there in 200? There are five, correct enough. Five arba'in. So he must pay how many? Five bin to labun. But if it takes any 50-50, then he must pay four hiqqa. So either any he pays five any bin to labun or five any hiqqa. Likewise, and if a person has 1,000 camels, then he can calculate. Huh? Every 40 and it is Bintu Labun, every 50 is Hiqqa. Some of you any, but might be wondering any, where do, do the scholars any get all these numbers? Why 130, then 121, 25, 5, every 5 and is where where do the the, the scholars any get all these uh, calculations? Now this is based any, on a letter by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the to the people any of Yemen. Yani because any the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and when they went to Yemen, so they asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, how do we know uh, about yani the nisab any of the, the zakah? So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, taught them, uh, taught them that when it comes any to camels any this is a nisab, this is a nisab. So this is exactly any from the teachings any of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, this is any based any on revelation. <laughs> So the fuqaha, they make it easy any upon us to understand uh, what is any the meaning any of this. The letter any still you, you can you can uh, you can uh, you, you, the letter any is still uh, available, meaning in the form of a hadith. Maybe any you can find out this is a letter also Sayyidina Bakr radiallahu an also wrote any a similar letter uh, to one any of the Sahabi, if not mistaken, in in Egypt. Uh, there are a few letters. So if any one of you any can access, you you can see, uh, you can see, and all these things any that we mentioned any are found any in that particular letter, uh, letter any that explains any about zakah. Then the author mentioned woman faqada wajibahu sa'id uh, ila a'la minhu wa akhada shataini kal uh, Now this is any important. This is any eh, important. Type. What is the author mentioned? The author said if a person and he does not have a specific camel to pay. For example, you have to pay one bin to Labun. 
but you don't have been to Labu. So you got a choice. Either you go down or go up. Either you go down or you go up. If you go up, go up meaning what? So now imagine I have to pay bin to Labun. If I go up, I have what do I pay? What is above any bin to Labun? Hiqqa. Taib. I tell any the the person any who collects any the zakah, I don't have bin to Labun, but I have hiqqa. So the person say no problem. You give me your hiqqa and I will give you two sheep or 20 dirham. Either I give you two sheep or 20 dirham. Clear inshallah? This is a compensation. Why compensation? Because now the obligation is bintu labun. But I am paying hiqqa, which is, which is more expensive. Bintu labun or hiqqa? Hiqqa. So I am paying more than the obligation. So Islam any doesn't ob make make it obligatory any upon me to pay much more than what is obliged any upon me. So Islam any will give any the compensation. So either the person gives you two sheep or twenty dirham as a compensation for you who is paying more than what any you supposed to. So if you go up. From bin to Labun, you pay any hiqqa. You pay any hiqqa. Either any you get two sheep or 20 dirham. But if you don't have hiqqa, you go to jaza'a. For example, he said, I don't have bin to Labun, but I have jaza'a. Can also. We take any jaza'a, four sheep or 40 dirham. So this is the meaning any of su'un. Yani going up. But what happens is Nuzul, what, what happened in Ibn Nuzul? Aw nazala ila asfal minhu wa a'ta bi khiratihi shataini aw ishrina dirham. Same thing. What happens any if I go down? Meaning, it is obligatory upon me to pay bin to Labun. But I don't have bin to Labun, I have bin to Makhat. I pay bin to Makhat. So now if I pay bin to Makhat, now I'm paying less than what is obligatory upon me. So I have to pay the compensation. Can you see? I have to pay the compensation. Either I pay two sheep or 20 dirham. Clear inshallah. This is the meaning of su'ud and nuzul. Yani sometimes sometimes uh, we don't have any particular a particular any camel. But we have some other types any of camel. So we can make agreement yani, with the sa'i az-zaka. Uh, sa'i. Uh, our, our, our scholars and in books of fiqh any day. Use any the term sa is zaka because in the Islamic uh, uh, Islamic state, the imam many will appoint agent to collect zaka. They, they call it the the sa i, the sa i. So he will go around collecting zaka. So he go to your to your house and he calculate how many camels any you have, and then he will tell you, okay, for you you have to come out bin to makhat, for you you have to come out bin to labun. So we have any two. Uh, we have to discuss this any with them by saying I don't have this but if I take any from the upper then you give me this or I, I take any from the lower so we can base any on agreement with the sign. Now, so by this any Alhamdulillah we have completed the zakah of the camel. So the next thing any the author any mentioned the zakah any of the cows and cow any is much simpler any than camels. So the author any mentioned Faslun Wafis Salasina Minal Bakari Tabir. For cow simple. When it comes any to Salasin, Salasin is 30. Anything that is less than 30, no zakah for cows. If a person has 25 cows, no zakah. Even he he has 25 cows any for 10 years, any no zakah. But once any number of cows and he reached 30, khalas. He has any to come out any tabir. Tabir any is a male cow that has reached one year of age. Why it is called Tabi' Because Yatba' Ummahu Tabi' Yani uh, cow that is still any one year It always any follow the mother Wherever the mother goes it follows That is why it's called Tabi' uh, Because it's still small It is still It is still small So Lahu sanatan au Tabi'ah So we have a choice Whether we, we give a male cow or female cow This is difference Tabi' and Tabi'ah whether a male or female, no issue. Wafi arba'in, when the cows and you reach any 40, then musinna. Musinna, 
the reason why it's called Musinna because the thief now started to go. We can see any the thief. It's called Musinna. Laha Sanatan. When it reaches any two years, any of age, coming to third year. Wafi Sitina Tabi'an. And when it reaches any sixty, two Tabi'an. Wafi Kulli Salasin Tabi'an. Then after that, every thirty, one Tabi'an. So the maximum when it reaches any until sixty. Anything that is above any sixty, we calculate any every thirty. We calculate every thirty. Fi Kulli Salasin Tabi'an. So if a person has ninety camels, any how much any he has to pay? He paid three, three tabi'ah. 120. He has a choice whether he wants to pay four tabi'ah or three musinna. So that is why he say, Fi kulli salasina tabi'ah wa fi kulli arba'ina musinna. Every 30, one tabi'ah. Every 40, one musinna. Uh, just like, just like any camels. Every 30, any is. Uh, bintu laboon. Every 40, uh, every 40 is hiqqa. Correct, no? So, in cows, any every 30 is one tabi'ah, every 40 any is musinna. So, if a person has 200 cows, any he has a choice. Whether any he wants any to come out. Uh, for example, any he has uh, 120, for example. So, he can he can come out any four tabi'ah or three musinna. So, uh, either he take every 30 or every 40. Wa fi arba'ina shatun. Wafi Afan, Wafi Arbain Asha Shatun. When comes any to when comes any to forty uh ships, it is compulsory any upon a person any to come out one ship. So now any we are going any to speak any about ships, goats. So the Nisam any begins any at forty. So every, when he reaches any forty, it is compulsory any for him any to come out one ship. Wa ila mi atin wa ehda. Wa ishrina fashatani until any a person any has one hundred and twenty one. So if he has forty one sheep, eighty one sheep, hundred one sheep, hundred twenty one sheep, but once any he has one hundred and twenty one, then two sheep fashatan. Wa fi mi ataini wa wa hidatin was salasun until the next nisab is two hundred and one. If the sheep any reaches any two hundred and one, then it is compulsory upon him to pay three sheep. Wa fi arba ati mi atin arba on. Then if he reaches any four hundred. Then he must pay four uh, four ships, summa fi kulli mi'atin shatun. And then after every every one hundred ship, he he pays one ship. So if a person has one thousand ship, how many ships in his zakah? Ten ship. Two thousand ships, how many zakah? Ah, uh, every hundred one minute he pays twenty, and so on and and so forth. So alhamdulillah, we have uh, covered. The zakah of camels, zakah of cows, and zakah of sheep. And then the author Yani mentioned any some rulings with regards any to uh, paying any of the zakah any of the animals. So he mentioned faslun wala yajuzu akhdul ma'i min dalika. It is not permissible to pay an animal that is ma'im. Yani ma'im any meaning there is uh, a shortcoming. In the body any of that animal. A shortcoming any in the body any of the animal. Illa ida kanat na'amuhu ma'ibatan kullaha. Unless any if all any the animals any are afflicted any with the same with the same uh, shortcomings. Then any it is permissible. Wa kadalikal miradu. وَلَا يَجُوزُ أَخْذُ زَكَرِي فِي مَا تَقَدَّمَ إِلَّا إِذَا كَانَتْ كُلُّ هَذُ كُورًا Yani the author, Yani mentioned, uh, it is not any permissible, Yani, to take any animal, Yani, that is sick. It is not any permissible, Yani, to take, uh, what do you call it, the males, unless any, all of the animals, any are males. Inshallah, Yani, we will stop here, Yani, because any of the adhan, we will, we will continue in our next lesson, Yani, inshallah, ta'ala. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين